So we are talking about this particular subject um, where you try to find, classify, segment customers whom you don't know. That means they don't reside in an enterprise. Now, most CIOs or most CTOs, they restrict their intelligence within the domain, unless until you run an e-commerce company, you basically restrict your intelligence or your scope within an enterprise. Um, one of the kid, one of, one of the kid, he actually came to me and he basically said that, look, Ravi, most of your customers reside on internet. Okay, so why you are trying to satisfy only those customers whom you already know? That doesn't mean you should not do that, but this is not, doesn't seem logical. And most companies and most tech folks with large budgets, they think like that. And it actually goes back to a management problem, which is a budgeting problem, that how do I pinpoint ROI for a marketing spend? Still unsolved problem. Again, that's not the premises of my work. My work is a tech work. So me and few of smarter young folks, we started working on an algorithm. And we said that our data source will be internet. Okay, because it is digital, and we are going to understand chatter of internet and extract emotions out of it, and we will understand those emotions because our philosophy or our hypothesis is that most humans, when they do a buy, their first impulse is emotional impulse, but whenever you write an artificial intelligence code, you basically write a listener. I have actually opened internet. Internet is a source of my information. Internet is actually my marketplace. So you fundamentally write a listener, listener, which basically gets into a stream of chatter which is happening on internet. The easiest way to tap a chatter is basically hit a social network. Let's for this particular example, which I've written, I'll, go, I'll show you the code, a Twitter. Twitter is the easiest one. So you basically hit a Twitter. You get the stream of that particular Twitter, and you store it. And when you store it, then big data actually makes sense. And data lake actually makes sense. Okay. And that's fundamental, the only difference how you write this particular listener rather than listeners which are based on ORD, BMS, or RDBMS, or Java versus whatever. So listener is where, hence, there's no machine learning, there's no AI for that. Okay. Second thing is what you basically said, you detect features you basically find out, hey, am I getting enough tokens, and those tokens can be nouns, verbs, or whatsoever, am I getting tokens by which I can create, so I'll, I'll not go deep down. You basically use mathematical vectors, consider, I'm assuming that most people understand computer science to an extent, they basically create arrays, okay, and they put tokens in those arrays, okay. And those arrays are stored as it is in your data store. That's the second part, which is done exactly by what you are saying using machine learning. Machine learning is arguably the easiest way to write that code. You can actually write using a structured language. Second thing is precisely what you said. You segment customers. So let me give you an example. And that's where the difference of architecture, how you write that particular algorithm, how you think about uh, writing code happens. That means anyone who drinks Starbucks, will that person be willing to travel an airline? Anyone who banks or who uses a particular credit card, will that person be willing to buy a certain category of car? When you write or when you do tokenization of features, then these kind or these kind of algorithms are built up, or you have to think, otherwise it's a waste of time and waste of energy. What I'm trying to say is that you start making correlation which are outside the boundaries of if then else, outside the boundaries of logic. It is in the boundaries of functional attributes and how those functional attributes can relate to each other. And that you write in machine learning. 
that is a little bit difficult code to write, but that's you write. Then comes the difficult part, which is how do you analyze that? And how do you discover opportunities? And where do you discover those opportunities? And are you basically having the right kind of customers? Some customers you may not even like to have. Okay, and that is a combination of machine learning and deep learning. There are very few examples in the realms of business, I'm not talking about science and space, in the realms of business where you use deep learning or outside of medicine, uh, where you use uh, deep learning on its own. You combine machine learning and deep learning to basically analyze customers and discover opportunities. The reason why I'm saying this, that they're using enterprise software, we hardly scratch the, hardly scratch the surface to either understand our customers or to convert those customers into actual business. By writing an algorithm where you basically snatch somebody else's customer, for example, if there is X airline saying that, and, and, and Y customer of that particular airline saying that, hey, by the way, I don't want, I don't like this particular airline because of seat or because of food or something like that, you need to understand that. You need to understand the emotion. You need to understand how quickly you can make that as a customer. Or if somebody is driving a particular car, and they basically say that they don't feel good while, while driving that particular car, or they don't like the color, or they don't like the size, you need to understand that. And that information is easily available, only it is unstructured, unstructured but easily decipherable, and freely available for everyone. Now, I'm not going to get into the ethics of internet and ethics of social media, that should you take it, should you pay the customers, or what is singularity and all that stuff. That is for politicians to deal with or people who deal with politics of information. As a tech person, you should, you, that's, that's a huge, huge data, that's a huge, huge information, which I don't see many companies or many large or small organizations tapping it. But that's where the differentiation is going to be. Differentiation is not going to be how, you, how well you can treat, because you can only treat your own customer to a certain extent. Now, this is at a higher, higher level. This is, for, this is basically just to, just to make sure. I'm assuming that most people understand system architecture at least. Okay? So people who understand system architecture, this is, this is for you guys. And, and we, we actually studied, we actually ran our algorithm and its code on four domains, which is travel, health, e-commerce, and banking. Uh, and this was the data source. One, I'm talking about customer data sets. Okay. Uh, anyone who tries to define customer data sets, huge mistake. It's not RDBMS, it is not database. This is unstructured data. Create vectors out of it, and then try to write your algorithm or code based on those particular vectors. And then somebody basically mentioned feedback controls and all this stuff. That's a very, very useful information. But here, that particular information is used. How do you convert or how do you ensure that whatever chatter is happening over here is used. So if your existing customer base is giving you a feedback and you can identify based on this particular feedback that this is a good customer, this customer is an intelligent customer, or this customer, I, I really want to define this customer as my ideal customer, that information can basically become part of your uh, learning database or a learning push, which machine learning will use and push into uh, deep learning uh, 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 to, to gain customer or to increase the customer base. Uh, and then customer acquisition and opportunities actually make sense. And then your enterprise layer of campaign management, customer relationship management can be far more potent. You can actually identify these are my customers, this is how I can link to them, this is exactly what you want from those particular customers, this is what those customers like, and then your investment in, in, in expensive tech which is related to customer acquisition or customer relationship management or things like AEM and all that stuff will be far more potent. And suddenly you will see, hey, by the way, my investment is actually getting converted into business. Customers are responding to my campaign. Somebody is replying to my email. Somebody is replying to my phone calls because each and every customer and its emotions 
can be captured and you can run your campaign to a reasonably good accuracy. My algorithm is a mathematical algorithm and what it basically does is complement complaint abusive threat emergency and L is the low difficulty one, H is the high difficulty one, and M and all the stuff. All, all. Based upon this uh, and the accuracy part, so very high difficulty one, my accuracy has been to a 37% extent. Now, when I, when I basically say that my deep learning algorithm fundamentally says, and I'm just making this up, that if my customer very difficult to learn, very difficult to understand, and if I provide my vector to run a campaign for that kind of difficult customer, the accuracy is 37%. So least, least accurate result is 37%, by the way. Uh, but this is the set of uh, sentiments um, uh, which I have gone through, which is just um, uh, uh, five attributes. And these five attributes have over 1,000 vectors. And these vectors basically decide that. I will encourage people to have more, uh, more sentiments based upon what business they are running and all that stuff. But these five vectors I actually found uh, in most companies who became customers of these particular startups. Um, and, and they said that you know, their ROI for campaign management has really, really gone up. And when I say really, really gone up, like you know, uh, CEOs are coming back to them and saying that, look, you know, what, what you guys have done, and I'm willing to pay you more if you actually increase the accuracy and all the stuff. And, 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 and the good part is that your accuracy increases as you increase your vectors or as your learning database increases. So you basically write a very simple code, which basically say that, hey, by the way, Go to this particular handle, OK, and read all the tweets. And put all these particular two tweets based upon some tokens which actually come from your feedback into your big data. In an essence, this is what it is. Second thing you do is data cleansing. Now, everyone over here knows. You are all CIOs. Everyone knows data cleansing, so I'm not going to explain that. Only difference which I will say here, when you do a data cleansing which it comes out of ML, you basically clean up the vectors. Third thing is that you basically do modeling. One of the very simple examples which I have given, if you really think that your customer uh, who drinks Starbucks can travel in an airline, then you, know, you model your algorithm in such a way. You choose your nouns and you choose your adjectives in such a way that they can translate into a campaign. Anyone who has done campaign modeling, it is very, very similar to that. And then you get into a zone of prediction, which I have shown, which is basically emotions and intents and how do you classify them. Um, if you have smaller budgets, then you basically go for very, very high accuracy. And you basically say that, hey, by the way, these are the vectors which make sense. These are the customers which make sense. I'm going to push it into a campaign. You, you use any kind of a structured language or use any kind of a middleware which pushes this particular data into your AEMs of the world or CRMs of the world or campaign management softwares, whatever you have written, and basically runs a campaign and accuracy of campaign goes up. And this is to summarize in an exact example what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, a student asked me, Ravi, what do you mean when you basically say intent? Intent is, is very simple. You, ask, you answer a question, what? What do you want to buy? Where do you want to travel? What do you want to change? Second thing, why? I want to travel for vacation. I want to travel for business. And which airline? OK. That can give you humongous amount of clues if you, are, if you, if you run an airline. Which are the places and why you want to go over there? So it's a combination of intents and the nouns which are associated with that particular intents which actually drive the result set. One thing which I will point out, one of the, one of the functions which we wrote was brands. And that was such a great function. Anyone, if, if you actually go and tap the brand chatter which is there on internet, Trust me, the kind of clues which you are going to get for your own business, and I mean for any kind of business, is remarkable. And as of now, nobody governs it. There are, nobody charges you for that, and you don't have to pay for nothing. Only thing is that you have to actually write a simple machine learning code. This is exactly architecture which is being used by over uh, 44 companies. Uh, and 
it's, it's, it, I have generalized it, but this is what it looked like. There is a domain modeler, whichever domain you are in. Uh, there is a sentiment modeler. There are customer profiles. There are customer profiles from internet, which are matched to your enterprise customer profile. There is the attribute detection. What do they want? Why they become angry? What they hate? What they love? And all that stuff. And then the discover opportunities. This is fundamentally how your architecture is. If you compare this architecture with any one of your customer-based architecture, right from CRM to uh, campaign, you will find this particular architecture to be a remarkably different architecture. But that's how future architectures are going to get built. And this is the